Hi guys, how are you doing today? Uh, we're going to talk about the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle. Uh, so, uh, if anyone other than BESS students from Thomas Worthington High School uh, are listening to this, please do not send me emails talking about the inaccuracy of the content as the content is being provided uh, to a specific audience. And so it is being simplified. I do realize there are some misconceptions that are being passed along, but it's only in the realm of um, the fact that we only have a very small given amount of time in order to teach these things. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We look at the carbon cycle. I like to think about the carbon cycle as having um, a short-term carbon cycle as well as a long-term carbon cycle. So this diagram that we're looking at here is a simplified version of how the carbon cycle works. And uh, let's just go ahead and start with the long-term cycle. If you move all the way over here to where the cursor is on the right hand side, you can see that there's really only a, several arrows that are being involved here. And uh, one of the first things that we have happen is carbon dioxide beginning in the air. And uh, carbon dioxide dissolves in the ocean, and as the ocean gets warmer, carbon dioxide gets released. Um, this is one of the reasons that as the earth starts to warm uh, in, in small increments, it becomes a, a very big cyclical change uh, because the oceans hold a lot of carbon dioxide and as they get warmer they release a lot of carbon dioxide so it kind of accelerates the uh, uh, greenhouse effect um, but this exchange between the air and the, the ocean gets carbon dioxide into the ocean where sea creatures um, build their shells from the dissolved carbonates that end up in the water uh, from the atmosphere and uh, as these, these shelled organisms die they lie on the on the ground. They lie in the, as a substrate um, in the ocean, and they get compressed and compact over a very, very vast and long period of time, um, where these ancient animals and plants become fossil fuels. And one of the fossil fuels that we burn often is coal, especially in the United States, where we get a vast majority of our energy. And so, as humans go ahead and burn these fossil fuels, these carbon oxides are being released into the atmosphere. And so what we've seen is we've seen the, the carbon go from the air into the ocean, and then from the ocean into the bodies of living things, and then from the bodies of living things, they get burnt, and then they get put back into the atmosphere. Now that cycle, if you were a particular carbon atom, it's very, it's very possible that you could just continue in that long-term carbon cycle. Now the other cycle that I like to, to call the short-term sub-cycle of the carbon cycle is, um, again, we start with carbon dioxide in the air. It's the carbon dioxide that we as human beings exhale and all animals exhale. Um, this carbon dioxide that's in the air gets removed through a process of photosynthesis. Okay, that carbon dioxide gets removed from the atmosphere. And it ends up in the, in the body of plants. And, and those plants, obviously, are the producers. They, they form the, the bottom trophic level first trophic level of the energy pyramid, and they provide energy as well as providing carbon to the animals that eat them. So as the animals go ahead and eat this carbon, they build their cells out of this carbon. And um, you know some of the carbon gets passed through as a waste product, and then that carbon gets broken down um, by bacteria in the soil um, that are decomposers. Uh, some of this uh, carbon gets stored in new cells, and so when the animal dies, um, that carbon goes ahead and um, goes back uh, into um, the body and then goes back into the, the soil. And, uh, <clears throat> and so, you know, so that's the first short-term process. And then, you know, uh, once the, that gets returned back into the, the soil, brought back up by the roots of the plants, or it can end up dissolved in the ocean like uh, as, as carbonates. But what you notice about this short-term cycle, it's just moving from the air to the plants to the animals. And then from the animals, it can either go back into the plants, or it can go into another animal, or it can get released as a gas. 
there's this massive amount of gas in our atmosphere. It's about 78% of the, the gas in our atmosphere. And uh, there's a whole lot of ways that it can get out of the air, and there's a whole lot of ways that these things can happen. But the most common ways that nitrogen gas can get fixated or can get moved into a solid form is by lightning. Um, lightning creates uh, so much energy that it forces chemical reactions to happen in the atmosphere. And one of those chemical reactions is the fact that the gas form of nitrogen actually gets uh, gets made into uh, nitrates, which are solids. And those nitrates are heavier than the atmosphere, and they fall out onto the ground. Um, and then obviously rain washes that those nitrates back into the soil, and then plants can take those nitrates up. Now, there's another way that the exposure of plant roots to the nitrogen gases, um, actually the roots have a symbiotic relationship, uh, a mutualistic relationship um, with the roots of the plants. And so there's bacteria and roots that are working together. And it's this bacteria that is able to capture the nitrogen gases and then turn those into solids so the plants can take them up. Now, plants need nitrogen because, well, they need to make amino acids and proteins, and so it's, a, it's an absolute necessity, an, an absolute necessity of uh, life for plants. Now, obviously, plants provide food for uh, the animals, so as the animals eat the plants, they, they're not only getting the carbon, they're also getting the nitrogen as well. Now, um, you know, nitrogen can come out of the animals uh, as a waste product, and those compounds can down into gas and return into the atmosphere. Um, decomposers can help break down this matter into the most basic parts, and one of those basic parts is into a nitrate, which the plant can take back up again. So basically, once the nitrogen has been fixed, either by bacteria or lightning, it gets eat, the, the nitrogen gets transferred from the plant to the animal because the animal eats it. Obviously, you have a producer that is uh, being eaten by a first order or first level consumer. So that's happening right here. And then the animal can die, returning those nitrates to the soil. Um, they can be broken down by decomposers and then they can get moved back up into the air. Um, where as a gas, it can get fixed by lightning again or it can get fixed by the uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria on the roots of plants. Um, and then you have one last thing here. You have a, a tractor that has a it says runoff from nitrates from farming enters the water. Nitrates are often used um, in fertilizers. Um, you know, commonly high percentages of nitrates um, you can find at your, your local store like Lowe's or Home Depot. And it's those uh, high nitrate fertilizers that cause the grass to be really, really green. And so, um, and that's not why farmers use it, obviously. It's to increase their yield uh, of crop. And so when they spray this on their field, the runoff will actually enter into local significant.